I gave the Russo with Majestic Rider. So today, when our horses gait, they eat, need to use their neck, their back, their stomach muscles, their legs um, a little bit differently than the trotting horses do that. So by using these different positions, it helps the horse either relax his back and neck or it helps him to tense it up. So if our horse is on the pacey side, the more we get him to relax his neck and back, it will usually help to get them out of the pace and gait better. If the horse is trotty, then we want to have them tense their back and their neck up a little bit to help us to get the gait. So depending on your horse, if it's trotty or pacey, can depend what position you ride them in. And again, what gait you're going for, is the gait more lateral on that side of the um, gated spectrum, or is it more trotty, like a fox trot, and that's on the square going part of the spectrum. is called a chair seat. So with this position, the pelvis is actually tilted back. It might be hard to see with my jacket on, but you can look at my um, hip position video so you can see that better. But, but I'm gonna tilt so my tailbone kind of tucks underneath me. And I'm gonna be sitting towards the back of the saddle, towards the back of the cantle. So we're putting more weight back here. And as you do it, you're still looking up and everything, but your upper body, instead of being straight and your shoulder over your hip, you're going to shift your weight back some. With that, we're gonna raise our hands up uh, because we're trying to pick up the horse's head. This position, you'll see, again, variations of it. So you might see a little bit, a little bit more a little bit more and you might see a lot. In some people, when you're watching them do this, you'll also see their feet go way forward and their feet get way up on the horses, towards the horse's shoulders. What they're trying to do is get all their weight back. By getting their weight back, the horse will tense certain muscles in his neck and his back. So by bringing his head up and the person getting their back, uh, their weight back, they're going to tense certain muscles and what it does is it makes a horse more lateral and remember certain gates are more lateral on that side of the gated spectrum so most of the time when you're seeing somebody ride like this they are trying to get a rack okay so the other time you'll see people trying to do this position is if their horse is trotty because if the horse is trotty and they're trying to get it to do a lateral gait or on the side of the, the gated spectrum that's lateral, they're trying to keep that horse out of the trot by having him tense up his neck and tense up his back. The more the horse relaxes and puts his head down and relaxes his back and the horse is on the trotty side will actually make your horse go into a hard trot. So that's the confusing thing. You know, if you grew up riding, this is what we learned. But again, you're gonna see people do different things with the gated horses because they're trying to get certain gates out of the horse. So with him, each horse is a little bit different, so it's helpful to know these positions, but you kind of have to play around and see what works for that horse. That horse. With him, when I do his rack, it's helpful for me to sit kind of in that chair position, but I don't want him to get his head too high. If he, if he gets his head too high and there's no vertical component of it, he gets a little bit more towards the pace. And then sometimes he does a hopping step, which a lot of the Rockies and mountain horses can do when you're trying to uh, get them to gate. They do like a half canter step because it's easy for them and they can do it pretty fast. So if he does that, I'm going to slide the bit a little bit to get him out of it. So when I ask him for the rack, I'm going to use both legs. I'm going to squeeze, I'm going to lift his head up, and I'm going to bring my weight back some. But then you have to keep your leg on him. If you're trying to get more towards a, a racking gate, and here it'll be, a, it'll be a saddle gate, which is like a slow rack. I don't know if we can get a fast rack in here if it's big enough. If you're trying to get that racking gate. With him, I have to bring my weight a little bit back. I'm 
really push him forward and get him to engage himself and then he'll start snapping his knees up and doing quite well. If his head gets too low, even though you would think that's away from the pace, with him he can actually pace with his head pretty low. Because the way he's built, his neck comes out low of his body, so he tends to put a lot more weight on his front neck. So I really can't like flop the reins and do it real loose and have him hold a good gait. He can gait like that, but it's not it's just not very good. So Mr. Nichols, when I go to rack him, he gets very crooked. He goes, he goes all over the place. He goes left, right, left, right. So you have to hold them straight when you go to rack. When you make a circle, that starts bending them. And again, when you're trying to rack, you're usually trying to get to, to tense their muscles up some. So if you're making circles or you're doing lateral movements like serpentine and things of that nature, that'll make your horse more towards the trot. So it's hard to do a rack and be circling and doing patterns and things like that. You're going to get a better gait if you're just going straight. If you're trying to get a flat walk or a running walk or a fox trot, then you can make lots of circles and serpentines. But just know when you're trying to get the rack, it's much better if you go straight. And that's why you'll see most videos with people like going down the road, they're going pretty straight. So let's try it a couple more times, Mr. Nichols. So you see my hands when I'm gating them and I bring their head up a little bit. What I'm also doing with my fingers is half halting. So I squeeze and relax on the rein. And what that does is it helps to balance the horse and bring him more on his back end. The more weight he has on his front end, then he cannot pick his feet up as high. So the more I bring him on his back end and get him to use his hind quarter, which is also called engagement, the more he'll start to pick his front feet up. And each horse will be different on how much they snap their knees up, depending on the breeding. And the ones that are usually more on the trotty side will bring their knees up much higher. 
the ones on the PC side won't lift them as high. But that's not a big deal. It's just so you know why there is the difference. So as you're racking them, just know if they start to do that little canter step, what I do is alternate my half halt. So I squeeze with one hand, relax it, squeeze with the other hand and relax it. So it's kind of like this. And I, you know, I'm being obvious with it so you can see it. But when I'm riding the horse, my fingers are like this and you'll just see this. So it won't be much. But what that does is it slides the bit across their tongue and it, it just makes it uncomfortable for them every time they're doing that hoppy step or that canter step and it just helps me to get them out of the canter because the, for them the canter is much easier and they're like I'll go faster but I'll just canter for you and if you're trying to get more speed to that gate you have to keep them out of the canter and you have to get them to engage themselves so just remember if you alternate your half halts that'll usually help the horse to stay out of the canter and remember when you're racking your horse he likes to get very crooked the straighter you can hold that horse as you're trying to get them to slow rack or fast rack, the better gait you're going to get out of them. So just try as you're riding to focus on, is my horse going straight or is his front end going to his left and his back end's going to the right and they're swerving all over. You're trying to hold them straight. And the more crooked your horse is, if you have your hands a little wider, you can be quicker at correcting um, them versus if your hands are in here. This is how you want to ride in time with your hands in here. But if you need to correct the horse because he keeps getting crooked, you can have your hands out here and you're just not so much pulling back on them, but just kind of pulling out to correct and get them to go straight. And you wouldn't, lots of people like are unaware how their horse travels. So have it off the rail and have it somewhere in the middle of the arena. And then you can really focus on is this horse straight or not? Because sometimes if you just get the horse straight, they'll start doing the gate correctly. And you're like, what? <laughs> That's it? And you're like, yeah, because when they're on the rail, the fence is holding them and you don't know they're crooked. But when you have them in the center, if you're trying to get that gate, sometimes just pushing them straight will help you to get them to engage themselves and do the correct gate. I hope that helps some of you that are trying to get your horse to rack.